Welcome to the Burning Pallets Podcast, sponsored by TechSource. Here's your host, Ryan Bolin. Uh, let's make this work. What's up, guys? Ryan here with Burning Pallets Podcast. We got our sidekick slash host, Mike Hoey, with a pretty cool hat. I must guess you must have uh, got some new hats or something. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, the Hooey hat. This Hooey. is uh people called me Hooey all my life. So gotcha. when this brand came out, I'm like, <clears throat> they made it for me. I mean <laughs> And then we have to the left of Mike, Dustin. Co welcome. Coach, coach, hey guys. coach, Co. coach, Co. 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 Yeah. I've always gotten it wrong. Yeah, I uh, like the CH isn't there. Dustin with uh, basic printing and more in Georgia. He's uh I guess we'll, we'll for the for the purpose of what we're doing claim you as the king of uh, digital squeegee, uh, or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, DS Hi, hybrid uh, DS. Uh, there's there's some guys out there that I'm could sure. put me to shame, but oh, I'm sure. But I mean, you, you, <clears throat> the amount you, of knowledge you've gone through, I mean, it's 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 a yeah, lot. It's, it's dude, I there's going to be a handful of people not even in our lifetime that will ever go through the journey that you went through to dial in, you know, this <clears throat> thing. And for the people listening, this is a I'll let you explain it better. And, and Mike, the digital squeegee from M and R. You got your standard manual presses, your standard standard autos, and your gauntlets and your sportsmans. <clears throat> and then you have the digital squeegee, uh, which is another beast. And then one past that is Polaris. But uh, from what I've heard, digital squeegee is a uh, more preferred. Yeah, yeah. For so it really depends on mm. what you're doing. If I were like a uh, you know, a customer that sells a lot of different images and gets one-offs all the time. Like, uh, and I'm, I'm a storefront, you know, an e-commerce storefront and I'm getting all these orders in and it's like this, or, this shirt color and then this shirt color and then this shirt color and then this, um, then the Polaris is great because you can tell okay. every single shirt can have a different print on it with a digital squeegee. You, it's, it's, it's the same as screen print. That's why they call it a hybrid process because you're still screen printing. You have to kind of stick to that image unless you use it as a silhouette. Um, so for like long runs and, um, or even shorter runs of like, you know, the fifties and 75s, but we prefer around the 1200s and stuff like that. I mean, it's perfect for that. I would, wouldn't want to run a Polaris cause then you're looking at maybe 200 shirts an hour if it <coughs> works and the ink doesn't dry out. Just like that. So <clears throat> didn't really, it's the same logo different colors on each logo yeah you can change the color with with well, variable okay data. yeah you're right i mean yep. well and and for the layman here what we're talking about uh specifically today the digital squeegee uh just picture a standard auto that runs an under base and some other stuff and then you've basically got this big white chunk down where you're laying a digital uh print uh, and then you could combine it with some other stuff. You could add in a specialty ink if you want, mm -hmm. but this is for like full color work. So mm -hmm. you got like that, that, that old shirt of Tom Brady throwing the touchdown pass in full color. Cam Newton. That that's yeah. <laughs> Cam Newton. Um, that's your, that's your, usually your high end spot separation. Yeah. That is going to be killed for sure in the future by digital squeegees because it does it much better and look and it's more versatile. Um, and uh, it takes a lot to just set up for one of those. And now <clears> you guys have, are, are doing this digital squeegee thing and you, you had to master this. So what was that? Um, we, we heard about this, but they haven't. Yeah. What was the process from the time you were just, you're running an auto press um, and they're like, Hey dude, we bought this digital squeegee. Um, go figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I didn't show it, but when I saw it, I was very intimidated, uh, because then you're looking at like, not just a screen and like ink going through a screen, you're looking at, uh, filters and you're looking at print heads and you're looking at all these colors and, um, negative pressure. And then there's a lot of, you know, kind of science to it. And a lot of things that could go wrong because every moving part leads itself to to be able to have more issues. So I'm looking at this machine and and it's it's pretty big. It's a pretty big print head, and I'm like, oh, oh man, this is uh it's going to be a lot. Uh, but stuff like that really does excite me. Um, I like figuring out what's going on. The owner of the company, Joe Lugo, um, 
he he really he's adventurous. He takes yeah, risks. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's really easy for me to, you know, get in with him because he is willing to take risks. And when you have someone that's willing to take risk, it's it's it, you know you kind of you start to do the same thing, and so I started taking risks, and I I will call the manufacturer of the ink, you know straight up. I'll I'll call Jesse at Matsui and say what's going on. I'll call M and R. I'll text them. Um, forming those relationships, uh, even with text source, has been vital to getting this right because they can tell you based off a of picture what's going on. And if, if you don't have, if you're trying to do this by yourself, it's, it's not going to work that, you know, I appreciate you calling me King, but you know, what is, what is the kingdom without its constituents? You know, what is the kingdom without those people being there, doing the hard work, getting on those front lines and helping you, you know? But I mean, you did a whole bunch of work and yeah. <clears throat> research and you trial and error. <laughs> and then you, you, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, you're you right. Well, it all together. You, yeah. And, so. and that's, you know, so Let's say, for example, that, you know, we, we put a digital squeegee in our new showroom. Who do you think we're going to call and say, like, dude, come up here and get this? <laughs> um, but if, if we get one of those, I will learn artwork. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. I'm sending That's this. I'm going to send this to Peter immediately. <laughs> if we get one of those, I will learn artwork. <clears throat> and uh, the the dynamics though mm -hmm. you still have the dynamics of uh the the squeegee durometer and speed and all the inks yeah. and uh emulsion over mesh don't ask oh, man. unless you know um but uh, so, so I know you were in there Jacob did answer that pretty pretty dang good yeah and he, we were just talking about that because <clears throat> you know the Jacob and I um because um he asked about you know I I've tried to get some tools around here we have a donut probe now mm -hmm. and he asked like hey do you have a gauge and i'm like no bro he we, was the wrong don't. person to put on spot and i didn't know he, no he was like dude i got this yes it's he, my time to shine he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he jacob knows a lot and but anyways uh, he you you asked him those questions and he was like one, he spit them right off he was Perfect. like pick pick me pick yeah. me no yeah yeah, he, I, yeah. yeah i'm glad and, that yeah. was that was a great example yeah. of what you should know uh with eom and stuff like that because like i said you you can try to make the digital squeegee work for you. And, and in some ways it does, but when your print process, when you learn how to use the right angles and squeegees, everything, it comes together. It's like putting a Lego thing together and it gives you instructions. If you skip a part, later on, it's going to hurt you. You think this digital squeegee is gonna work for you? No, you gotta do a lot of work on the back end to, to make it work right. Like the EOM, like mm -hmm. the squeegee pressures, the, the <clears throat> durometer. The yeah. triple durometers that you're talking about. You went to depth on each one of those things, but the digital squeegee is not going to work for you. You got to make it work. Yeah. But if you give it the right resources, yes. it runs all day. Then it will work for you. Yeah. yeah. Well, then, yeah, then you can start. Uh, yeah, then you can. It, it can <clears throat> be a cash cow for you at that point um, because there's going to be so many people out there that can't do what you're able to do. And I was, I was a tunnel, vi tunnel vision on the digital squeegee. I was picturing it as a machine that would print your underbase, screen printed it on underbase, and you would print, which it does, but it prints multiple different colors per shirt. Like you could print one shirt red, white, and blue. The next, very next shirt will be green and red. You could, yeah. You can, but I mean, I was tunnel vision thinking of it only that way, but you're doing it as 15, 2,000 piece runs. Mm -hmm. um, perfect detail, high end detail, same color all the way through. On three screens, yeah, versus an eight color, twelve color screen or, or print. So I was always tunnel vintage, tunnel vision with multiple colors, but again, that's way off track. Yeah. So your your traditional simulated process, which I'm a huge fan of, I know yeah. you're a big fan of. It's one of the funnest print processes I've ever done, and I used to love making a fish swimming in the ocean look real. And then you get digital squeegee. It's really, it's in the same vein, but you let the digital squeegee itself take care of those colors, and then you take your underbases, and you let the nuances of how you want the colors to look, you let your underbase dictate that. So one of the things I even did with direct-to-film when I took that over is I kind of just, I looked at the print heads, I looked at what they did, and I said, like, as if it were a person. I know this is a weird way to put it, but it's honestly what I did. As if it were a person... I kind of looked at it and said, what do you need from me 
to get this. Like if I want a 180, 186 Pantone, what do you need from me in order for you to print a 186 Pantone? So I kind of just went reverse. Mm -hmm. Like the the tie coat, the digital white, whether you're using clear or whatever, how much of that do I need for this specific color I'm looking at to fall on that tie coat to look like that color? Yeah. Uh, Because if I keep trying to go, oh, I'm just going to do 100% or 50% under base, the digital squeegee cannot change what it's doing, but I can. So that, that, that was even with, you know, like I said, direct to film, when I color profiled that stuff, I went with, okay, how are these inks printing? And I'm going to measure that. And then I'm going to take those measurements and put it in my rip software. And then that's going to, now I can get any color that I want with this, within a certain degree. And um, because I allowed its ability to tell me how to make things work. Does that, does that it, make sense? In, in your yeah. work, right? It, <clears throat> we're talking about a lot of the artwork yeah. process. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the digital squeegee, it's what am I doing before and what am I doing after? Yeah. Um, it was a digital squeegee digital, or preset. Yeah. It, okay. it, it's going to give a consistent, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, it comes with a color profile. Now I can go in there and create my own color profile. It's something I want to do here very soon, but that's what I did with the direct to film. Um, but the current profile is what it is, right? It, it's going to print the way it's being told to print. So I need to adjust to that. And when I did that, when I made, when I kept looking at how inks and colors responded to my underbases, I adjusted my underbase over and over and over again until those colors got where I needed to. And they looked like the colors that I have on my calibrated screen. Go ahead. Um, on the, uh, since you touched on direct to film, still on my um, question. There, there's some, uh, <laughs> still on my yeah, question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there, you know, there are two different creatures, but they're similar in nature because you have CMYK, obviously direct to film, uh, has the, the white element in there. Yeah. So there, there's got to be some limitations because when I look at DTF, I'm always looking at the problems other people are having, mm-hmm. you know, because I, you're thinking like, how can we solve this? And a lot of it has to do with you Don't can't do it. get this smoky, you know, this this gradiated sort of like you know you're treating the edges mm-hmm. uh, on the you know the, when the print falls got, into the shirt basically, it's yeah, blending and, into the shirt, and everything is under base with white and yeah. the direct to, to film. So that's probably the the limitation there. Yeah, and that's honestly just about one of the only limitations. So with direct-to-garment, you can't do polyester. Direct-to-film, you can all day. So if if you're a spot color vector printing company and you're doing a bunch of hoodies and you're doing small runs, direct-to-film, like we have now 25 heat press operators Hmm. and we've got seven of these direct-to-films. And they're they're they really are amazing. Um, so like, you have twenty five people operating your heat presses, give or take. Yes. Okay. That's a lot of paninis. <laughs> cook in, in a day. Yeah, yeah. And and our company, I, I could be wrong, but I think we're around forty percent of our company now is is direct to film. And we've been doing it for just over a year. Is this print on demand model, or um, is we're, this uh, the short run stuff? Like, do you guys say, oh, like, hey, I want this full color thing. Well, you're not at the threshold, so you're, we're going to use direct-to-film for you? Hon- honestly, this is probably not a good answer, but we've kind of let our customer tell us, like, hey, I want this on direct-to-film. Because uh, our pricing is a little bit better for direct-to-film because we're, we're trying to grow it, and it, it's working really well. Pause. So let's, let's, go, let's start back from the beginning when we first introduced you. Tell us about how many autos, heat presses, direct-to-film <laughs> machines you have, and obviously the big guys, the digital squeegee. Yeah, so we've got uh, 10 workhorse Sabre automatics. That, that's where I started when I got in and was on the, one of those Sabres. Um, again, I got into it after I sold a, a screen print company that I had um, due to just some stuff with my family. Uh, I had a, We had a son, and I wanted to spend more time with him. Uh, so... And then we got the the striker. It's a twenty eight station striker with a DS. Um, we've got a gauntlet coming in, so I guess that's twelve automatics. And um, we've got a, a ton of embroidery machines. I don't know much about embroidery, but I know we have plenty of heads. And then um, we've got seven direct to film machines now as well. And then twenty five P presses. Yeah. 
So, so uh, are you doing any specialty stuff with the DTF too? Is it mostly just textiles? Uh, we can do some fluorescence with the Cobra Flex, um, but we rarely, I think we may have done three jobs with it. So uh, our customer, um, the customers that we have haven't really asked for it. We're a huge BSM printer. So that means a lot of vector spot color artwork. And so that's perfect. Like when someone wants six hoodies for DTF, that's nothing. It doesn't yeah. take... Yeah. take much at all but we can also do 120 we can do 300 um and stuff like that so we've kind of eventually i think we'll we'll start to choose when we want to do dtf versus screen print but right now it's really working where the customer says from bsn says hey um, i've got this order can you run dtf based on and, based on price right based on price or, <clears throat> or, or really preference i mean mm. i think dtf looks better on a hoodie than a screen print most of the time does mm. Yeah, I mean it's yeah fleece is it's hard to print yeah. and make it look good. So then, direct to film DTF versus digital squeegee. How are you? How are you? I guess multi or mass runs with the digital squeegee is what you're going to do, use that for. Yeah. Versus DTF, but your quality is going to be different for, between DTF and digital squeegee. Yeah, I mean honestly, for spot color stuff, direct to film is it's way better than the digital squeegee. You get you get more um, more ink down, um, but when it comes like that, you know the tonal stuff. Getting the tones that like blend into the shirt, you can't do that with DTF, and for longer runs, it makes more sense to put it on an automatic. You know, it it just mm -hmm. it still does, and I think it always will. Um, but yeah, so so direct to film, it also feels more bulletproof which we we've tried to stay away from so if you are doing a bigger image that has a lot of under, wide underbase and it's a full image it's not going to feel that great whereas on digital squeegee it feels amazing you get a really good uh, drop you get a really good hand feel it washes great it's water based too so it's just going to get better once you wash it um so yeah there's a lot of give and take but uh, you know a question i get a lot too is this going to take over screen printing i just in some ways, yes, but I, I really don't think in the long run, no, because the screen printing is so, and I, I don't mean this rude in any way, it's foolproof. Like, yeah. It, anybody with a, a screen printing press in their garage can can screen print and get stuff. They can put it in their oven. I've had a customer call yeah. me before and say, hey, can I cure this in your oven, in my oven? I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't, but you can't do that with digital squeegee or direct to film. But you know, I think screen printing is always going to be around. Uh, it's a little nervous, nerve wracking that it would go away, but I, I, I just don't it's, see it happening. The, it's life cycle. It's been around for thousands of years, and mm -hmm. there's going to be people that want that. And then you got to think stuff like discharge and specialty inks that that um, you know that's going to keep the screens, you know, the fabric with a stencil in it. I don't see it going away, you know, anytime soon. Uh, I don't see digital killing that, mm -hmm. but it's just killing certain aspects like uh, high end spot uh, yeah. uh, channel separations, and uh, it's killed it. But it's also opened new things. Like I, I mentioned in the meeting earlier, and then now you can look at a customer and say, "You remember all those times I told you I don't want to do all those colors? <laughs> now you can look at that customer and say, hey, all it takes is me, is three screens for me to hit.'" whatever photo you want to send me. Like like I said earlier, a mascot running with a flag in his hand across a football field. You want that on a shirt? It's Now it's just three screens instead of 12 to 18 screens or something like that, de depending on your artist. And so it's opened up a new revenue where you can have your cake and eat it. Would yeah. You? And and the trends too. I mean, like sometimes, you know, artwork trends change, you know, mm -hmm. where you're, you know, things could go back to simple and blocky and you know solid color more screen print tra tradition you know uh, traditional stuff but in the end you if you're in this business and you're a player that's going to reach bigger and bigger people you're going to print for the brand names you have to keep up with this stuff mm -hmm. or um you're going to stay in the local sort of vein yeah um, which, you know, that, that's fine. Every region, every city needs its local screen printers. Yeah. Uh, and that's a good thing. It feeds the whole ecosystem of, of, of the screen printing world. Mm -hmm. But if you're a growing company, you got some autos, um, this is how you get to that next level customer. 
and start doing the nationwide uh, stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, like I said, I, I think it's going to save printing, more printing domestically too, because if you get something done in uh, overseas, <coughs> it's going to take a while to get that um, done and back up here. That's a great point. So, and it also may, it also may help, like you said, some of the local printers because we don't take any local work. Like people can't walk into our shop and say, "Hey, can you get this done?" That's got to be a dream. It, 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 it oh is. my god! And like all the artwork is sent to us. The yeah. only thing I have to do is separate it. Uh, and then, of course, sometimes you get terrible art, but for the most part, it's it's great art and it's it's ready to be worked on. It's high resolution. It's huge, and uh, so it's really good. And and like you said about you know making yourself a company that puts yourself in an advantageous position joe and rob the two owners at basic they they always do that you know yeah they, they you know how the saying you build it they'll come i think a lot of business owners wait for them to come and then they build it but but these two they're like no let's establish something let's get the digital squeegee and the the direct to film in let's spend six months doing research and development and then let's release it and the the amount of customers and work that we've been getting through our door lately has been insane. Last year, we were 20-something, I think 24 days out in screen printing. This year, we only got to seven or eight days out. Wow. So our turnaround town time was absolutely insane. That's because we had different. We have now multiple departments that can put stuff out for us. Mm -hmm. And because of that, BSN, they kind of go and they look, how many days out is this person or this person, this person? When you stay at seven or eight days yeah. out consistently, you get all the work. Yeah. And that, man, we had we had a great year because of it. And and that's all due to, you know, the, the owners at Basic like, taking a chance on not only the stuff, but their employees. And the speed of the digital squeegee coupled with the striker press or even a you know, a challenger or some of these other uh M and R presses, um, I I would think it puts you in the even the hot market uh, territory where you can do some hot market stuff mm -hmm. where that stuff, you have to turn on a dime, yes. wait for them to win. Oh, they won. Mm -hmm. Turn right. the presses on right. and yes. then hammer out this stuff out. Yeah. So that's got to come in handy because I bet hot market, they could never pull off this type of, and of even, work even more regionally. What you were talking about with variable data, what we could do is build art, right? Like if I want the score of it. On yeah. There, I can have the art built and I can have everything sitting on the press waiting to go. And then when the game's over, I can tell the digital what the score is and it'll print that score. And I can literally start printing as soon as the game's over. Yeah, it, as long as you you have a common underbase, yeah. right? It, yeah. It, you encase the score which within would, a... Which wouldn't be hard at all for just, you know... Yeah. You could do like a bubble and then like a thing and then a bubble and then you just fill it out when the game's over and that's it. And you can even have the... I know this is kind of nitty gritty, but you could have something ready for both teams. Yeah, you could absolutely. Have art, digital yeah. artwork ready for both teams, but your underbase would be the same whoever. Yeah. Won. yeah, in the old days, what we'd have to do is if we had three presses running um, uh, hot market, and we were going to print uh, Clemson or you know Alabama, mm -hmm. we we would hedge our best. Whose favorite? Is about halftime, we'd say, "Looks like Clemson may yeah. pull this off." We'd have two presses set up with with Clemson and one with Alabama, and then Alabama would win, and we'd have to tear down yeah. two presses. But the dynamics of that uh, for people not understanding, if uh, d picture, uh, I know Adidas when they did, did the digital squeegee, we've all seen the trefoil leaf adidas design so picture that as just a white print and then the digital squeegee can print a full color and every single one could be a different as long as that white print was the same yeah so it the digital squeegee could be programmed to do a leopard print and then a jungle print and then mm -hmm. you know uh, whatever you want a, a, a solid color uh, on the fly, uh, even, but, yeah. um, like if you did a circle, you could have like a bottle cap, you could have a, a sewage drain cover, like anything that's a circle can now be printed on that. Yeah. But the, the hard part is now the underbase has to be a hundred percent and that's where you kind of lose a little bit of ham feel. Yeah. But again, if it's it, planned out well, yeah, it right. can be versatile like that. <laughs> yes. Whereas what we spoke about earlier, the Polaris is a full on digital machine no screens, mm -hmm. and that model is really built for high-end uh, print-on-demand yes, where every shirt is a different color, 
and a different print and maybe a different material. Mm -hmm. And that machine can handle it because it's got the barcoding and it understands, oh, this is a 50-50 blend. We're going to spray this much uh, of, of the, and it has to be pre-treated. Mm -hmm. Whereas you're not pre-treating this mm -hmm. um, and the wearability. Probably my favorite part. And, and the wearability, if it's done right, I think the the digital squeegee, it, it holds up all day long. It isn't like you have to say, well, it looks all good, but, you know, wash it a few times. These things, uh, are, they, they, it's got to be done right. But, Correct. But, but they, they pass the wash test. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the first few of our prints probably did not pass the wash <laughs> test. Uh, it, being honest, it, it took us a long time to figure out how to get that stencil right so that when it did get washed, it was holding up. And, yeah. You know, we, we make a few extras so that, like, one of our printers, he loads. He's an incredible loader. His name's Josh. He'll take this stuff home and he'll wash it. And he'll wash it again and again. And he tells me almost every print we do so that I have, you know, a, a working line of what is and isn't working. Yeah. He he just wants a giant T-shirt collection. <laughs> you, you know, screen printer. Yeah. Like, I, I've had to uh, ditch off so many shirts over the years. Yeah. My wife's just like, come on, you're not even wearing these things. You got like 200 t shirts. <laughs> so, speaking of uh, <clears throat> sports and that sort of thing, you're in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Basic printing is outside of Atlanta, something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you guys have the digital squeegee when the Braves won this past? They won this past year. No. Or was it two years ago? Two years ago. Did y'all have it ready and work, working then? No. Okay. Yeah. So if you would have had it ready and working, it would have been... But you were doing hot market, right? But then you'd have to be, you know, in, in good you'd have working condition with, like, Fanatics. Fanatics, okay. yeah. Um, which, you know, could... It's it's something that <clears throat> seems like it, it's going to possibly start happening for us more. So what about... Um, they're begging for people. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> is, 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 <laughs> they're, they're begging <clears throat> for people. And, and custom ink and stuff like that, so... So if Georgia would have been in the national championship last night, you mm -hmm. guys would have been... Prepping for that with the BSN? Honestly, it, it, possibly. Yeah, I didn't really think of that, but there's a chance that we could have been one of those people ready to go. Um, I, I don't know that for sure, but, you know, with some of the stuff and some of the customers, I, I don't want to tell the customers because we have to kind of be discreet being a mm -hmm. contract printer. Yeah. But some of the customers that we're working with now and the, the pool that they have, there's a good chance that we could have been doing that, especially if the, I don't think the championship was in Atlanta, but if it had ended up being in Atlanta, that could have been huge. Yeah. Yeah. You always want the regional printer. So if you're in a place where, you know, the hot market, you're going to get all of these printers in the local area that's going to serve that team that wins. And then you're going to have some scattered off, you know, mm -hmm. here and there. But, um, and, and you, you know, two months out. You know, two months yeah. out, uh, Fanatics is, but the hard part about grabbing it. you and saying, like, hey, yeah. sign this contract. Yeah. It, I've, the ones who have done it, I've you know, and this isn't to bad mouth anyone, but it's it's a really hard experience. You know, you're up late with your team, you're sitting yeah. around, you're waiting, and then like y you have to wait for a green light, and you never yeah. know when you get the green light, and you, you know, it it's a lot of red tape. I'll put it that way. Yeah, uh, from what I've heard, uh, <clears throat> but it could be like incredibly lucrative and beneficial if if you have the right systems in place to take yeah. care of the it, tape. If you ever do it, hit me up. Okay, I've done them. I did them for ten years at Adidas and uh, so Reebok, you know. and then I did them at All American. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're gonna sign up for that shit. They're like, what? We can make how much in a night? <laughs> sign them up. I'm like, but boss, we you know we're you know we're gonna we work day shift, and now you're going to have us come in at. About midnight mm -hmm. is when all these games end. And then, um, depending on how much you work, a lot of times I'd get out of there 12 hours later. Yeah. On your feet all day. Yeah. Um, but, hey, you, you'll get pizza. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I made the, yeah. I Not at that the, time of the night. You'll I, get the... Uh, it, it'll be cold. Yeah, it'll the, be the cold. Gas, you know, you get the gas station chicken fingers and <laughs> French fries. No, no. Fortunately, QT. You know, they have the pizza there. Oh, um, yeah. Literally, uh, running a company, I was cooking hot dogs all night. The team had figured out. Like once you figure it out, it's good, right? Yep. Once you figure it out, because usually they're simple designs. <laughs> they're five or six colors at most. Usually four or five because they know that they. They have to get a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So somebody's got a six color auto, you know. Yeah. I think you have to have like a eight color just to get in the game. But in the end, 
Beer um, and hot dogs. If you float out, I was just cooking hot dogs on the grill. Hot dogs and beer. Yeah, but for but twelve, I, night, 12 you, hours. Yeah, shift. but I was. Can we do the hot dog, hot dog thing now? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hungry yeah. too. Yeah, I was pretty. <laughs> you guys, I mean, the all the food in the sales meeting. Uh, <clears throat> there's a big sales meeting going on. Dude, I can't, I can't eat before a presentation. I it's same thing. So with, he's starving now. I am. I am so starving. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of that, someone who spent all night, Devin. Mm-hmm. Uh, at combat, I remember Scott having to deliver ink to him one time. Correct. He, he had I don't I don't remember the specifics, but I do know that he went down that path, thinking that it was going to be it might have been good, but I know it was a pain, and he asked for him. It helped him get through a season. Yeah. And now now he doesn't need it. Yep. Uh, yeah. If you, if you haven't heard of Combat Iron Apparel, uh, they they are amazing. They're really good people. Oh yeah. You know, they're veterans. They take care of vets through the company. And uh, they're, I mean, honestly, some some of their stuff is very vulgar if that's not your style, but it's funny. Like, it, yeah. it's creative. If yeah. it's military, it's going to be they, savage. They had you know? a ton of followers, and then they got kicked off. Yeah. That was something, that was something they weird. got kicked off of their social <clears throat> media. What, just for being too savage? Basically. Yeah. 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 They're good, though. Good, good all work, good, good designs, good ideas. Great people. Uh, yeah. All, all of it's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those military brands, like I said, they go beyond the pale because, you know, it's one of those things where if your job is like you've signed a, a check to the government, as they say, you know, for up to and including death, mm-hmm. um, that brings uh, the best and the worst out of people when it comes to societal norms. So, like, nothing's off the table in a, in a war zone. So when those guys are making T-shirts— that are funny, mm-hmm. a lot of them, you know, regular people won't understand, you know, what that, you know, the, the, yeah. the meaning of that stuff. So, and he kind of times. treats his company as a war zone. And I don't mean that as in it's dangerous. <laughs> Grenade. <but laughs> like, I get emails from him at like two, two in the yeah. morning sometimes yeah. because he, he is working his tail off to make this work. Yeah. And it, it's really cool to see. And, and, He's he's a great screen printer too. You know, he doesn't didn't just get a brand and like whatever. He knows his stuff. And if a shirt is not right, he'll tell you. Yeah. But I I love that. I want people to tell me instead of just like disappearing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I used to walk <clears throat> walk through a shop when I would when I was living in Georgia and I'd drive back and forth. I'd go through a shop and find some t shirts, some shorts and mm-hmm. pay for them all. And I would just walk through his little sh- I don't know how it is now. That was probably three, four years ago. I haven't been back that way. But he had a pretty good little shop, and I would go in and buy we, T-shirts and shorts and all kinds of stuff. We, we got to get this cat on the uh, podcast. Uh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Y'all would have so much fun with him. <clears throat> yep. Well, we'll all just carry that day, like open carry, instead of <laughs> like hiding in a <laughs> kidney, <laughs> right? Yeah. Adam, open, it'd be more like open <laughs> even, carry. Even Adam will be carrying that day. <laughs> open, open carry some 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 joints, <laughs> some uh, all kinds of stuff, some beer, alcohol. What, We'll we'll make exception for the medical, you know, situation for our guests, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm I would, would not uh I'm I, I'm out of that league now. I'm too old. Which is why we got a driver for Long Beach. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the driver <clears throat> for a long the, Beach. The rental car is gonna be under his name. Yeah. Everything's his license, everything's under Mike's name. Yeah. Wow. That's smart. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. The, and it, it's so, smart for me too, because it's keeping me on the, on the, you know, straight and narrow, because mm-hmm. if you think about it, you know, if I'm just like, no, I want to be in there, then, you know, I pull a Jacob at the oh, Long God. Beach show and, and show my ass, you know, he didn't the, show it. No, I, I just he, say, but, but <clears throat> he was out of sorts. Let's yeah. just say, um, what was I going to say? The, these trade <clears throat> shows though. So well, here's why we had to get a rental car because the hotels are so freaking expensive next to the convention center it was gonna cost us like eight or nine grand just for four rooms we did wow. now granted we got in a little late to get these rooms but it's still this would have right. been expensive but that's tech source fashion yeah you <laughs> getting in, in a little late yeah yeah we're gonna do this i guess right now chronicles um, from well, we would have never <laughs> gone we would tech source would never go to long beach to have their own uh booth it doesn't make sense we're on right. east coast west coast so just Things come about in our favor, and we were invited, and so that's why we came in late. But it's a great opportunity. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. uh, 
Anyways, rental car, we'll cause we're staying. The hotel is at the airport, so we're staying further away. Wow. He, he rented it's, me. He rented the, it's a minivan with, with no, 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 woods, no, we're not doing that. Wood sides and shit. I mean, this is going to be a, this is a, like a, they Dodge see four caravan. guys come out of, get out of a minivan. They're going to think something, <laughs> yes. uh, something's going on. You know, it's, uh, I don't know what it is about renting a car, but I, I absolutely love it. It's yeah. almost like for a second, there's an alternate reality that you're living in. Even though it's still you, you're still with your wife, still with your kid or whatever, but like, yeah, I'm driving this car and you know, it's, I don't know what it is about it that's so cool. I love renting S- Slamming cars. the brakes and just rough house it for a little bit. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, uh, it, and it depends on the rental car. If you get something that, that's <clears throat> different or maybe exciting that's not your everyday, there's something about just driving a car that's not yours. Yeah. I, I think that's what you're kind of alluding to is like you're getting behind this. You don't know what all the buttons and stuff are, and but but you know sometimes and you you're, get a you're in car. a different town and like yeah, it's I, I don't know. I do, you're it's incognito. Exciting. Yeah, man. There's a whole mystique around that. Yeah, I will go into the slap shift on most rental cars where you the manual, <laughs> so I'm revving up and I'm like eh, like screaming through the towns and <clears throat> where I'm shifting up and down with the manual. Yeah. Yeah. Drive it like you stole it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yeah. Especially when they put unlimited miles. I'm like, bro, I'm going to drive to the beach or something, you know? Like, then you have to pay for all the, like. So you're, you're not going to be at Long Beach, I take it, since it's such a far. Uh, we, we were planning on it at first, but with um, with some of the new customers we've got coming in, and we've got a, a gauntlet, 18 color gauntlet coming in around the same time. Bummer. We, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we just kind of decided to to get our house prepared for what what's coming in. Yeah. Um, hopefully we'll go next year, but I'm surprised uh, M&R hadn't like snagged you and, you know, had you, you know, be around to, you know, well, be, they've got be, Cody man. And that guy is yeah. seriously, I cannot talk. Did we meet about Cody him. at the other show? I just don't. You probably talked to him briefly, but we didn't. He's usually <clears throat> running the shirts and doesn't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. Is he, he, was, is he kind of tall no. and thin? <laughs> Completely opposite. all the way opposite. He's not okay. fat, but. <laughs> the sh- he's shorter, uh, dark hair. He always wears a, a toboggan. And uh, you, you you would know who we're talking about if you met him. Okay. Yeah. You just hear him talk and you're like, yeah, that guy knows what he's talking about. Yeah. I mean, you can tell. Like when you, you, you know, I met you for the first time today. And like when you came in, we were working, you know, uh, on this presentation thing and Mac and all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, this this guy knows what he's doing. This will be good. And I think oh, I geez, said, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think I said something about like, yeah, I get, to, you know, we got to get you on the podcast, and it was already predestined. Yeah, yeah, predestined. Uh, yeah, predestined. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and he's got the hat. He's the, yeah, he man. is the first <laughs> recipient. Nobody knows about this hat. Um, this yeah, this it's, is it's made of real silver. It's what it's, they call a shameless. Is, yeah, he's got the copper. Oh, this is made of real copper. This is yeah, worth seven hundred dollars. This patch is. Wow. Well, um, that's you. retail value. Real copper. Yeah, retail value. Um, but that that's a hat that we're debuting at the Long Beach show. Man, it looks good in looks, that camera. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Look at that. If you haven't, oh, if you sweet. haven't bought this hat, you know. They're they're not for sale. Only the honored and the few, the proud, oh. will actually ever don one of these. So will this? Uh, can I sell this in like black market for? A well, lot? wait. You get. We got to build the hype up gotcha. first. No one will know what the hell it is right now. But is there packaging I can keep there, it in? There's gonna. <laughs> it's gonna be a coveted. Mike's gonna sign it for you first, and then oh. it'll be. Bro, even better. Wow. Screen printer. You know when uh, during the sales meeting, Robert. Um, uh, said something like, hey, we've got some new people in here. Everybody go around the table and introduce themselves. And I'm standing in the back waiting for him to look at me so I could introduce myself <laughs> as screen printing Jesus. I was going to try to make a joke. It never came. The whole time I'm like, all right, I'm going with it. And my mind's racing. I'm so not going to say. In all say, seriousness, why are moments like that so awkward? <laughs> why? It's I, like, you know who you are. But it's like my name is Dustin, and I I like eyelashes. I, I don't it's like what happens. And I like to screen print. Yeah. I'm screen printer Mike. Yeah, yeah. We, we do that in our classes. I mean, we make each person introduce themselves, tell them why they're here, what they want to learn, so we know what we're gonna tackle and like one on one. But they they are like that little little awkward. Yeah, it's but, it, it it's definitely except for the teachers and the cops. They they speak up and they're. Yeah. But then you always have that weird one guy in the corner who says something that no one laughs at. 
yeah. and then the silence is. It's because you don't know if he's trying to be funny or if it's just that. Oh, but he laughs. Uh, flipping he la- creepy. But then they laugh at themselves, and it's like. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, so Lone Beach, uh, you're not going to be there, but <clears throat> that's next week, actually. That's that's coming up fast. Wow. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you? Uh, have you got our stuff ready? I mean, do we know? Well, um, yeah. As you can tell, the pod qua- <laughs> the podcast equipment is packed already. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, we're we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it because I'm building in so many. You know, like if this happens, that happens. But yeah, logistically, we got to get everything packed up. Uh, so um, the rest is gonna be. Do we lose our? crap on the airline if we lose one suitcase we're we're screwed so we we have to travel with with a lot of uh, yeah um, extra stuff here are you using pelican cases we have one pelican case yeah. for the you know the stuff that adam's got back there the nice. the, the switcher and the soundboard nice. those are amazing um, and the sensitive stuff some cameras and then a golf bag that I'm going to put the tripods and stuff that, you know, can kind of travel a little better. Nice. These things stretched out. Um, and then I'll wrap it in like towels or old t-shirts to kind of soften it. Um, you but, have air tags for everything? No, that's a, you in case somebody steals. Uh, or it gets lost, you'll know where it's yeah, at. they go missing. If there's one reason why I came here today, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> You're the real screen printing Jesus. You just saved me. <laughs> how much are how much are air tags? Uh, they're not that bad. The, they're not that bad at all. Um, we, they're less than losing and having to buy while you're in city. What, what are they like? Fifteen bucks a piece now or something? No. I think it's more. <laughs> I, I I don't remember. They're they're just the little disc that you you put on some chick's car that you're stalking, uh, and then you can follow her. A cut. Yeah. Cut. <laughs> yeah. That's my experience with them. I, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, Which side note? So when you're here in Kings Mountain, there's a <clears throat> there's a, a gateway trail. Yeah. Where you hike and you walk through, kind of exercise, mm-hmm. whatever. Didn't someone air tag you or follow you throughout these trails and kept no stalking way. you every day or something of that nature? They might have been using an air tag. Yeah, dude, I'm so sorry. I, yeah, because I when, won't do it again. Because <laughs> they only were there when my truck was there, and um, believe it or not, I did uh, check for an air tag. Like, there's a way to check. You know, you can turn yeah. your Bluetooth on and see. You know, like, hey, or I think even Apple tells you, like, there's a funny air tag like around you. <laughs> Um, yeah, they would know. Yeah. In Atlanta, they just steal you. They don't need air tags. <laughs> just, oh gosh, they just take the person. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it takes all the you know the the struggle out of it. Yeah, it makes it clean. Yeah, yeah. Good. There's no cat and mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to glaze over the fact that you got followed through a trail multiple times. Right? It wasn't just one once. It was a, a hint of ten times or more, or um, less. I I. Th- we we had three um, occurrences. Um, should I be even telling this to the world? We had three occurrences before there was a confronta- uh, a confrontation. Were you um, wearing that new uh, pheromone spray that everybody was trying to push? The you, hooey. You, you were just yeah. <laughs> you were irresistible. <laughs> it was called hooey. Hooey. <laughs> <laughs> By Faberge. Beautiful. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what the, the deal was, but, um, yeah, it was upsetting. And if my untimely death, uh, happens, um, it is a, a, a private video on my YouTube. I did a YouTube series about this as it was going down <laughs> because I wanted to document it. Wow. Because let's say that there was a scenario where I had to defend myself then I have, you know, I wanted to let people know that I'm, I got, you know, I'm being stalked here and, and, you know, this would help support. That's how freaked out I was. It was, wow. I was already building an alibi, alibi in case there was, um, an unaliving to occur. Well, so why did Mike die? We don't know, but then we go home and see his computers and his interviews to himself. Yeah. This no, I, I, I sent it to some people. That, okay. So yeah. it's, is it in your will? <clears throat> Um, no, but the access to my digital media. Yeah. <laughs> I had this, you know, Apple has that thing that you can sign. Um, like I did it for my wife and yeah. there's a certificate hmm. 
if I get whacked, she can see all the stuff and, you know, get access to all my accounts, which, you know, is huge because, you know, there's a lot of digital information. So we have to make an ode to you t-shirt if that were to happen of like a silhouette of you and Bigfoot going off into the great abyss as, as, as you're passing away and y'all are both happy. Y'all have each other again. Yeah. I actually have my, um, in my will, like what t-shirt I'm going to be buried in, right? Like what it says and everything. I have the art. Does anybody want to, I I think we could do a line of these shirts. Um, but my, my shirt says I just died and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Um, (laughs) But, um, but no, I, I think there could be a death, uh, you know, there could be the death t-shirts that could be a, a, a t-shirt site for the recently wow. deceased. Right. I mean, everything's more casual now. You can go to, to church in a t-shirt. Why can't you go to your grave in a t-shirt? Yeah. Let's, let's make that a real reality now. You you could put like, why are you crying? I'm the one that's dead. <laughs> um, you could put lots of stuff. <laughs> Anybody, Adam, come on, you're witty, dude. Can you come up with a, your death T-shirt? Or just one that someone might wear? I'm not touching that. Yeah, you're, you're not touching that? You have to do uh, dead or alive. I don't, I don't speak on speak on that. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so. <laughs> you guys are freaked out about the death thing. I uh, love it. I think it's, it's so brilliant. Na- it's so natural. It We're about nat- to get on a plane. Yeah. Yeah, I know. We're about to get on a plane. There's a big Alaskan airline shit going on with the with the door flying off, right? Oh man. And and so I'm looking on our tickets. Is it the same Boeing? Oh crap it is. Shit. I hope they inspect this thing. It's, wow. a, it's the Boeing. Yeah. Well, anyways, before you got off way off topic. Okay. Um, it um, still landed on t shirts. It is it, true. That's not. Yeah, that's, we, we talk more about <clears throat> about this industry on this podcast than any other podcast by like ten times. I'm guessing, right? <laughs> we talk about what? We talk screen more printing. about actually screen printing. Usually, we're talking about gingerbread houses. Oh, talking about on this yeah, specific one. Yeah, and dancing uh, on tables. We, we, and we do pretty, and, we do pretty good with each podcast. I mean, it's just it's different each time. But there's some value. I'm literally going to do a trailer on this. And I'm going to be like, if you haven't watched one of the podcasts ever, watch this one with Dustin Co. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just to build some, you know, yeah. excitement. And then they're going to be like, bro, why is he so pale? <laughs> I'm most, <laughs> I'm most dreadfully embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, he, he's the same shirt as his, he's the same color as his white shirt. Like what well, is because happening? because you're screen printing all the time. You, yeah. I'm never that. in the sun. Yeah. Always inside. Yeah. Yep. Anyways, uh, Dustin from Basic Printing and More, uh, growing more and more with the digital squeegee. That was a topic of this podcast, digital squeegee. Uh, it's a great product. It's yeah. and, you, and you've learned tons over the past year and a half <clears throat> between the emulsions and the squeegee pressures and mainly and most importantly, artwork. It's massive yeah. learning the artwork because the digital squeegee – can do amazing things. You just got to be really good with artwork as well. So, yeah. I mean, it's, you, you dropped a lot, a lot of knowledge with us in our meetings earlier as well on this podcast. So that's why I dubbed you as the, the king of digital squeegee. I know yeah. there's other people out there that know it, but I mean, like Mike said, there's a handful of people that will ever, that will ever know that much. That know the full circle. Yeah. Mm. You're, you're in a giant company like Adidas. You may learn how to do the art. Yeah. Then one guy may learn that the 60, 90, 60, is is the best durometer for, uh mm-hmm. that's the best all around if you only had one squeegee blade for the rest of your life yes every top printer i've talked to auto printer they say it's got to be a 60 90 60 yeah that, that's and if, if you don't say so i would venture to guess that you're not using it right you're probably using way too much pressure yeah if it's if it's just like ink just like creaming the screen and it's because the edge of that squeegee isn't cutting the way it needs to. Where the mentality of most printers that are out there in the world mm-hmm. is is more pressure fixes everything. Mm-hmm. That's what you see like when you go to places and it's the one thing if you're teaching people mm-hmm. because they just, they're like, oh, the print's not clearing or whatever. They just put more pressure, <laughs> more pressure, yep. more pressure. And, and literally <clears throat> some um, worker at Adidas said that one day. Uh, more pressure fixes everything, and it was quite the opposite. More pressure is a band aid. Yeah, like like again, let's let's bring up well, the double squeegee because that, that I think that can be a little bit controversial. 
Um, we There's were, no controversy. They suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, so we were using them like at basic and I, I loved them, you know, but this is when I was just doing the screen print side of thing. That's all I had to do was worry about putting, you know, shirts on a palette and making it look good. So I didn't look at our EOM. I didn't look at any of that stuff. So I got the double squeegee in. I was like, okay, now we're clearing. But, you know, come to find out our screen tension was low and our EOM was only 5 to 7%. So the reason I can't get ink through a screen is because it's not set up properly. Um, and the, the double squeegee is really just a Band-Aid for that. More pressure is really just a Band-Aid for what you're not doing right in the screen room. I, w- yeah. I would rather have a full-on break my leg to fix it and, and like a clean break to fix it and let it heal properly than just constantly put a Band-Aid on something Yeah. to where you're just creating bad habits. I, I can work much faster and much easier with the correct EOM and the correct, you know, squeegee angle and all that stuff, the right artwork, all that stuff. I can work much faster than trying to make a double squeegee get me. Pre-press? Oh, yeah, yeah, pre-press. It puts you in a different league when you figure it out. Unfortunately, there's tons of printers out there successful making money, mm-hmm. but but they're stuck in this area where they're never going to. And that's get, from get, being self-taught. I, I think yeah. I would say majority of printers are self-taught. Yeah, and, and that's okay. So logically, it would you would say more pressure. Yeah, and, and you know I don't fault anybody for that. But pressure what, makes diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but once you find out that you can run a good print around the 30, 40, even sometimes twenty psi, which I know sounds ludicrous, but when you can get when you can put the ink on top of the shirt instead of through the shirt, yeah, it makes the world of a difference. And that also, you know, when you have curing problems. It might be because some of that ink is in the shirt instead of laying on top of it, and that you can't get the heat to penetrate correctly. Um, and you can tell that by taking a shirt that's been printed and turn it inside out. If you see a bunch of your white sticking through the shirt, that means yeah. you've printed through the shirt. Or yeah. you can just when you take or it off your the pallets, pallets, yeah, your pallets <laughs> get the build up on you. Got to yeah. scrape it. If yeah. I walk by a, 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 a press and I see ink on the pallet, I immediately say hey, there's too much pressure, and they're like, "Are you serious?" And then I'll go turn the pressure down. Print still looks good no more ink through onto the palette. Yeah, same same true with discharge. Mm-hmm. If you if you're going all the way through, you're you're wrong. But I Ryan, you tried to wrap us up. You, you no, gotta, you're fine. You're you're just gonna have to stop us because I have a feeling yeah, I just gotta pee, that's all. I do too. <laughs> I yeah. do too. And he's starving. So be true. That's both. So yeah. take us home, Ryan. Take us <clears throat> to the promised land. Land the plane. Take us home, brother. I appreciate Dustin for coming by. He you've been here for two days again with all of our salesmen, digital squeegee, digital squeegee, digital, digital squeegee. It's, uh, you, I'm going to say it one more time, the last time, king of the, the digital squeegee and the knowledge you know. Thanks for coming by. Mm. <clears throat> Letting everybody know in the podcast world about it. Yeah. All of our salesmen know. Mike's now more excited about it. And uh, Well, thanks for having me. You, you guys have been very hospitable. Yep. If you ever get a chance to come and uh, visit TechSource, it's, it's a really great place to be. Awesome place. The best awesome place, place ever. Yes. We have a couch. We have <laughs> yeah. a freaking couch. <laughs> yeah. All right. Appreciate you guys. Thanks.